Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all of the tech tips and information for your family that you didn't even know you needed. If you want to support my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe. Today we are talking about how to set up an Android phone uh, to hand over to your kids. So you're buying them a brand new phone, it's an Android, and you want to get it all set up before you hand it over. If you've already handed over an Android phone, you can take it back and reset it up in this way, and then it will be completely protected when you hand it back. So let's get right into it. Hello friends, I'm Sarah Kimmel, your friendly neighborhood tech expert. You can find me helping families with tech problems on TV news, podcasts, Instagram, Facebook, and my website, familytechzone.com. Now with Android devices, you're going to use Google Family Link um, as kind of the base parental control system. Now Google Family Link changes from a 13 year old to a 12 year old. So you wanna be aware of these limitations. So a 13 year old can opt out of parental controls and they can do that from their device and you will need their device in order to set up Google Family Link. Now the 13 year old, like I said, can opt out but you will get a notification that they have opted out and then you can um, talk to them or or uh, take away their device accordingly. So if your child is over 13 years old, you will need to set up their Google account first if they don't already have one. Don't use their school account. Set up a real um, Google account with their name or whatever they wanna use um, for their account. So when they're 13 years old, you need to just kind of go on your computer, set up a Gmail account for that 13 year old first. If they are under 13, what you want to do is download Google Family Link for parents and check, make sure you're looking at the right icon. So Google Family Link for parents and once you download that, you have the option to create a child account for somebody who is under 13 years old. So those are the two ways you need to create their Google account. So either if they're over 13, set it up on the um, computer. If they are under 13, set it up through Google Family Link. So if they are over 13, you're gonna need to add them to your family plan, but we will get to that in just a minute. So you've got the Android device. The first thing you want to do is download all the apps that you already know that you're going to approve. So there are a few apps that I have that I like to use that I already know that I'm going to be using for my kids' devices. So if I'm gonna download all of those apps first, it's a lot easier than trying to approve all the apps afterwards because the method I'm going to show you is actually going to make you approve different apps in two different locations. So if you get download them first, it's gonna kind of jumpstart all of that. If your child is under 13 though, um, it will still ask you for those approvals if you've turned that on. So another thing you can do is you can go into Google Family Link and turn off app approvals temporarily while you're installing all of these applications and then you can turn it back on. So if your child is over 13, the next app that you want to download is the Google Family Link for kids. and. Um, once you install that on their device, go back to your device and add them to the family. So you'll go into Google Family Link on your phone and then you'll hit the plus button at the very top. Once you've hit that, then you, it's going to ask if they already have a Google account. Since you've already created it, go ahead and hit yes, and then it's going to walk you through the rest of the setup. You will need their device on hand in order to scan a QR code to link their account to your Google Family Link account. So once you have Google Family Link set up with their account, you can go in and change all of the different settings that you want to set per child. So if you want uh, one child to have more access than the other, if they're a little older, then you can set all of that up through your phone on the Google Family Link app. If your child has a school account, you can add it to the phone after you have set up Google Family Link. The other issue is if you are setting this up after the fact that they already have their phone and they already have their school account on their phone, you will need to remove the school account to add their account that has Google Family Link. Once you've got all that set up, then you'll be able to add the school account 
back to the device. Now, if your child is under 13, it is going to limit access to some applications, uh, particularly YouTube. It may force them to use YouTube Kids. There is some new parental controls that you can set for regular YouTube, and you can allow that or deny it through Google Family Link here. So once you have Google Family Link set up, what I like about Google Family Link is it's going to help control time limits and application installs. So if they try to install something from the Google Play Store, you will be set up to approve that application. Um, and then you can look into the app, see if it's an okay app to let them download, and then you could approve that. So I really like that kind of base layer for the Android device. The next layer on the Android device is another third-party monitoring software. So I really like to use two different ones. I like Boomerang Parental Controls because it's going to show me all the text messages sent and received. It's going to send me all of the YouTube videos watched and things like that. So I really like that insight. I don't access that all of the time unless I get flagged from the other application, which is Bark. So what Bark will do is it kind of scans through all of the texts, all of the images and things like that, and will alert you to anything that's concerning. So when I get those alerts, I will maybe dig into Boomerang and see if there is anything concerning. Um, I can look at the context because Bark only gives you kind of a small window of what the concerning content was. So if I go back into Boomerang, it's going to show me a little more details of what's going on in that conversation so I can see if it really is going off the rails or if, um, if it's something that is benign. So I like Boomerang for that kind of extra insight, but I like Bark so I don't have to be monitoring constantly because it would be a second full-time job to monitor a teenager's phone. What I also like about Boomerang is it's another layer for application control. So I can set time limits in these applications. I can also make it so I can ap approve specific apps. So when my child installs an application on their phone, I get a notification first from Google Family Link. I can approve it there. And then I get the second notification from Boomerang. And this kind of just gives it an extra layer of protection in case they're gonna sideload any apps. If you install an application through its APK, that's called sideloading. You download the app basically and you install it outside of the Google Play Store. So Google Family Link won't notice that, but Boomerang will, and it's not going to allow access into the app until you manually approve it. So I really like that kind of double layer of protection for the Android devices. Also, Boomerang will get me uh, GPS, so I can see you know where my child is. Uh, it has a few other things. Bark also has application control. I don't use Bark for application control because I already have Boomerang, and so um, you really, a lot of people are saying that um, some of the parental control applications can conflict with each other, and that's really only if you're making them do the same thing. So if I have three different application controls, uh, you know, it can start to conflict. I give it a half an hour with Bark, but I only give it um, you know, 15 minutes with Boomerang, things like that, it's going to, you know, take this one or that one and it's going to get really confused. So it can cause a lot of conflicts if you're setting up kind of the same things in different locations. Now the application install, that's okay because um, Boomerang and Google Family Link are both controlling application installs, but they do it at different stages of the game. So you can use multiple parental control applications just as long as they're not conflicting with each other. Uh, the other thing that I install or I use is something to protect the device when it is off my Wi-Fi network. And for us, we are Verizon customers, so I use Verizon Smart Family. So I also install Verizon Smart Family to help protect the phone when it is on its data plan. So whatever carrier you are using, you can use them or you can use a VPN. If you don't remember what a VPN is, definitely check out that video can, that will VPN the device back to the protected home network or Wi-Fi network. So 
I have a Griffin Wi-Fi router and they have something called Homebound that you can install on the device that will essentially bring the phone back home. If you have slow internet speed at your house, it is going to be a poor user experience when they are away from home if you use something that brings the device back to the home in that manner. So those are all the things I install on an Android device. As soon as it's got all of that, I hand over the device, they start downloading the applications, and I start getting a whole lot more notifications from Google Family Link and Boomerang, uh, but it is well worth it. I would way rather approve an app twice than not approve an app at all and have them using apps that I don't know what they're doing. So uh, that's how you set up an Android for parental controls. It gives you the best window into what your child is doing on their device. So good job for getting them an Android device. That is the best way to help kids step into technology use and start to use technology in a healthy way. Make sure you are subscribed to Family Tech to get all the tips that I release every Thursday. Uh, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I do Instagram Reels every day that give you additional tech tips in very quick format. So check me out over there. I do also answer direct messages on Instagram. So if you have any questions at all, you need more specific information, go ahead and hit me up over there. And so we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.